Hi, everyone. Welcome to this live with Serge Tankian, hosted by the Armenian uh, National Committee of Australia and New Zealand. I'm honored to be joined here by a Grammy Award winning artist and musician Serge Tankian. Hi, Serge. How are you? Hi, Udi. Good. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. I'm also here with Hai Kesaryan, Executive Director of ANC Australia. I am Huri Yeldizyan, uh, Chairperson of Armenian National Committee of New Zealand. Serge, first of all, uh, how are you and how have the last couple of days been for you? It's It's been a stressful week for all of us, I'm sure. Uh, every, everyone of Armenian heritage having to deal with the um, aggression by Azerbaijan and Turkey into uh, the nagorno karabakh enclave and Armenia proper. Um, you know, to, it's, it's interesting. I was talking to a friend of mine, a director friend of mine in trying to explain to him what's going on. And I said, imagine if, you know, the grandchildren of people that have committed genocide um, attack the grandchildren of the victims of the genocide 120 years later or 105 years later. And, you know, it's, for, for us Armenians, it's an existential threat is what I think a lot of people don't understand. And these are territories that have been under, that have been Armenian indigenous territories for thousands of years. And Joseph Stalin literally took it from us in the 1930s and gave it to Azerbaijan. Um, when the Soviet Union devolved, you know, um, in the late 80s, early 90s, there was a movement for independence. There was a referendum for independence. Azerbaijan didn't want to hear about it. This is majority Armenian populated lands. So the people basically had an independence movement and they won their independence through battles. Um, and now 25, 30 years later, you know, Azerbaijan has still not given up on it, it wanting those territories. But in reality, what they're going for is not territories. What they're fighting for is their, is their own political existence because they're a petro oligarchic corrupt regime that nobody respects. Um, and they just buy respect with the petro dollars that they gain. Uh, but for Armenians, it's our homeland and it's an, an existential threat, especially with the joining of Turkey and their high tech equipment. Um, so it's really stressful for Armenians around the world, especially because we're not there. We're participating through these type of, you know, uh, awareness campaigns and trying to gain support through different political institutions uh, so that others can understand what's really going on um, and, you know, get rid of the idea of this false parody of clashes between two countries. There are no clashes. We're being invaded by the same people that massacred us 105 years ago, and we're defending our lands and we're going to do so. And that's what it is. That, that's exactly right, Serge. Um, and you mentioned uh, Artsakh's people's right to self-determination. I think, Hyde, could you give us a bit more context around what is currently happening in the Republic of Artsakh and in Armenia? Yeah, first of all, Serge, thank you uh, for your advocacy. Uh, I think, you know, it's so important to the Armenian world, considering how small we are, that we continue to roar like lions and, and people with profiles like yourself and, and you know, even our own premier, uh, Gladys Berejiklian, and obviously, you know, people like Kim Kardashian and Alexis Ohanian, there, there is so much uh, to be gained uh, from your advocacy. And I do think that we've already started seeing a turn hoodie. And I don't think it's in a small part based on uh, the advocacy of Serge and, and people like Serge. So uh, the, the narrative initially was uh, that there were, there were clashes on the border and somehow, you know, both sides are equally at fault, that false parody that Serge referred to. What we're seeing now is a bit of a shift, both because of, you know, the comments of world leaders and also in the media. Uh, people have now seen through the media, not just through Armenian uh, voices, that uh, Turkey is, uh, has its claws firmly planted into, into Artsakh and Armenia. Uh, it has taken command over the air force of Artsakh, of uh, Azerbaijan, and it is attacking sovereign territory of, Art of Armenia and also um, self-determined territory uh, of Artsakh. Uh, they have sent mercenaries um, 
to uh, that they have backed jihadists effectively that have been causing havoc in Syria against the Kurds and other people. Uh, they've sent them over to Azerbaijan, and they are effectively acting as the front line for this um, for this attempt to invade what is indigenous Armenian land. Let's not make any uh, any confusion about this. It's important that it's referred to as an attack. And, it is, and, the, and the people of Artsakh are not ethnic, they are indigenous to that land. Um, so what we're seeing now is uh, leaders like Emmanuel Macron and you know, US presidential candidate uh, Joe Biden and others saying uh, uh, different things, but definitely bringing balance to the argument slowly but surely. Uh, they have all highlighted that Turkey is involved. Turkey's hands are dirty in this mess. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's this uh, deadly dictatorial duet of, uh, of Erdogan and Aliyev that are involved in this. Uh, and in the case of Macron, he has said that evidence uh, has proven to his government, at least, France, that uh, the aggressor, the attacks were initiated by Azerbaijan. Now, when you initiate attacks, you plan these attacks for months. Uh, you also plan the media reaction. And I think that the reason that uh, I'm praising Serge and others is to turn that so quickly is important uh, because we can't have people thinking that defending indigenous lands uh, is the same as being as attacking uh, other people's territory. Um, so uh, where we're at now uh, is the brave soldiers and, and people of Armenia and Artsakh are once again forced to defend their existence. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I was very frustrated by the whole media and international community coverage. Serge, in your, uh, in your view uh, and what you're seeing now, do you also see this turn slowly happening in, in opinion? Absolutely, uh, the, in, especially in the last few days with uh, Emmanuel Macron basically uh, kind of basically saying Macron, uh, Putin and Iran have all uh, noted the um, Syrian fighters that have been imported into Azerbaijan by Turkey to fight Armenians. Um, they have noted uh, Turkey's rhetoric and aggression and uh, their warlike stance and their involvement. So it, everyone's starting to basically pay attention. Mind you, this has been going on. This is the fifth day now or sixth day, I should say. So, you know, everyone's starting to now shift and they're realizing that this is the situation and you know, Turkey uh, is the largest destabilizing factor in the in the region, as we all know. Um, they've been in Syria um, attacking the Kurds and uh, grabbing lands from Syrian, uh, the Syrian nation. They've been in Libya uh, fighting. Um, they've been in the Mediterranean drilling and uh, basically threatening Cyprus and Greece in different ways. And now they're in the Caucasus and they're not just you know, they've, they've always lent military equipment and advisors to Azerbaijan for many years, but now they are actively involved. Their jets, their F-16s are firing upon Armenian indigenous lands and killing people, killing civilians as well. And that's uh, an escalation. That's a war crime. Um, and, you know, the, we cannot allow the kind of rogue government of uh, Turkey's Erdogan to be able to attempt this. The world community cannot allow it. Uh, Armenians are gonna fight strong. We're gonna stand strong as a nation all over the world with our soldiers and, and defend our, our, our people. And uh, we're not gonna allow another, another genocide. Um, and, uh, you know, so I think it is shifting. I think, you know, uh, you know we can talk about the battle itself and, and numbers and stuff like that, but. I think the important thing for people to realize, especially non-Armenians around the world, uh, that we're fighting an existential battle against an aggressor who, whose only interest is oil, uh, money, and the annihilation of an ethnic minority from the area so they can you know, go further with their nationalistic, pantheronistic plans that they've hatched 110 years ago. Yes, uh, well Serge, very well said. Um, we're discussing Turkey in this context also. We're not just discussing Azerbaijan. Uh, Macron has, President Macron has come out and said uh, they condemn the acts of Turkey as well, particularly just, uh, I think yesterday it was that they took control of the Azerbaijani Air Force. So mm -hmm. 
what do you want from other world leaders and what do you say to a lot of the silence that's coming from world leaders too it's you know it's high time that world leaders basically tell turkey to f off <laughs> with their f-16s um <laughs> you know i they you know they've, they've been causing havoc everywhere else and you know the kind of silence of the trump administration the lack of entanglement uh not just in the area in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm not asking US soldiers to be involved in the Middle East or anything like that. That's that's not what I'm saying. But the inability of diplomatically holding things together in a in a in a uh, in a world community type of way as one of the strongest nations in the world has allowed this thug to kind of reign free with his desired, you know, corrupt plans and it's got to be stopped. So I, I think, you know, why, why isn't Australia, why isn't New Zealand taking a stance and saying Turkey should not be involved in this battle? If, if, you know, I mean, we're telling you that two nations are attacking us on our indigenous territories and killing our people, including civilians. You can say, you can talk against that, but at least talk against a nation that doesn't even belong there, Turkey itself, you know? who's literally fighting, who's literally using their weaponry and F-16s and mercenaries, you know? I mean, why would you bring Arab mercenaries from the Middle East into the Caucasus? Iran's threatened, Iran's pissed off. They're, they're amassing soldiers at the border, you know, because they don't want, you know, Sunni uh, insurgents in Azerbaijan to threaten their lands, you know? It's like, why the hell would you mess this up? I mean, it's, it's 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 really a big shakeup, and they don't understand that it's destabilizing the region. It's not just Armenia. It's not just Azerbaijan. It's the whole region. This is going to affect Georgia as well, because Georgia is in the middle of transporting military equipment, both for Armenia and in terms of Azerbaijan. And they've 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 stopped allowing Armenia to transport equipment. Armenia is a landlocked country. We don't have that many neighbors. We don't have a port, and we have two neighbors that are basically invading us right now two out of four neighbors. So, you know, we're, we're going in time when all this is over, we're going to take inventory of, of, of what's really happened here. And we're going to, uh, you know, make just amends to our foreign policy and, and to the way that we treat people, you know, um, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame, my, you know, like people that follow my music in Georgia should be incredibly upset at what their government is doing right now, because it's allowing Turkey and Azerbaijan to belligerently bully and kill people in Armenia. Thanks, Serge. Um, you know, we've we've actually uncovered some important information over the last 24 hours that we'll be releasing today. Uh, so um, uh, there's a there's a cargo airline that's owned by the Aliyevs, uh, Silkway, uh, and it regularly, uh, you know, it's actually been proven in the past that it has. Uh, exported arms to jihadists and other mercenaries uh, on behalf of Turkey in particular. Uh, we've uh, basically been able to track two flights of Silkway between Perth, WA, and, uh, and uh, all the way to Baku, um, obviously making a stop in Asia on the way in Hong Kong. Uh, we're uh, urging the Australian government today to make a really significant um, investigation into this matter, look at flight manifest, let's see what it is that is flying from Perth to Baku, <clears throat> because it is very important that we're not allowing, you know, for Australia to somehow be used as a tool in this campaign. And to be honest, even if it's not being used as a tool, we believe that uh, an aggressor party that is in, involved in a current armed conf conflict shouldn't be transporting uh, cargo to a country uh, that has, that exerts the value of Australia. Um, and, and, and to that end, we've been lobbying uh, for a statement from official Australia, from Canberra, and I know Hoodie's done the same, she'll tell us about that with Wellington. Uh, we are trying to get a, a statement from the, from the Australian government and also the New Zealand government. And we have advised them that, uh, you know, the opinion is shifting while they ponder what that statement's going to be. I guess that's why the delay is happening, uh, you know, other than... Uh, preoccupation with other matters. So we are folk, we are putting a lot of pressure on that uh, on that fact. And anything the community can do uh, to help on that matter, and the same with New Zealand, I think it is uh, trying to call uh, the foreign ministry, the foreign minister's office, 
those numbers uh, are available. Send the emails there and say, why is Australia silent on this? As Serge said before, two countries, two dictatorships in this case, uh, that, have a, that have a history of impunity on genocide are attacking uh, Armenia and Artsakh. What do you have to say about this? Um, and, and how are you going to denounce it? So we are pushing for that. So anything those who are following this can, uh, can do um, uh, will be appreciated. Um, uh, and in, term, in terms of um, what the international <clears throat> media reaction has been, how do you uh, make sense of that? Because I know that you've had a few words about some of the coverage uh, that has been alluded to was originally coming out. Uh, what should people be looking out for, Serge, in terms of uh, you know the, the the vernacular, the the euphemisms that are being used for what is an attack on Armenia, and and how should they react to that? A lot of, you know, because of the conglomeration of media and the use of technology, a lot of media have become really lazy. So one report becomes dubbed by, you know, a number of different international media and they don't really investigate. So, you know, and unfortunately, it was Turkish media that took the lead because they started the attack and they had people on the ground ready to go. And so international media, as you said earlier, did this false parody of clashes between these two people. It's not clashes between these two people. We were invaded by two different countries uh, on our indigenous lands. And so that is be becoming established now, finally, but there's, that's still, there's still work to be done in understanding that. Armenia is allowing uh, journalists into Artsakh, into the uh, nagorno karabakh region, as well as Armenia proper. Azerbaijan is not allowing any journalists except Turkey, who's one of the war party uh, members to basically cover the events. That says a lot, obviously, because they don't want media. Um, just like they didn't want, uh, you know, uh, on the border, they didn't want monitors for years. For these last, you know, since the 1994 ceasefire, uh, the OSC has been, has been basically saying, we need to put monitors on the border. We need to put gun checkpoints so that if someone fires on one side, there's an international arbiter that basically can determine who is doing the firing. Azerbaijan has never wanted that. Armenia has agreed to that for years. It's the same thing. And even Turkey denying that they are there shooting with their F-16s, just denying it is just like they're denying the genocide of one and a half million people. I mean, it just shows that a century can go by, you know, uh, the world can change in different ways, but some things stay the same. And we need to uh, wake up the international media to to exposing the truth. This is the truth. These people, they started the war, even though they did a propagandist campaign to, to reach false parity, they started the war. So that's the least that they can do, is just say that Azerbaijan and Turkey, after doing their military drills together, started a war. That's the least they could do. And that's the truth. That's right. We, we, were, we were referring to Turkey's involvement as well. And um, Many watchers will know, obviously, that um, in 1915 to 1923, and there around then as well, it was an Armenian genocide. 1.5 million people died as a result of that genocide. Countries have recognized it, but not Australia, not New Zealand. We should mention here the connection to Anzacs and Gallipoli, Gallipoli which is in Turkey. Uh, Serge, can you make a comment on what do you think is stopping, uh, albeit there is an election going on in New Zealand at the moment, uh, what is stopping uh, Australian and New Zealand leaders from talking about this? What stopped New Zealand leaders when Winston Peter went to Turkey right after the mass shooting last year, what stopped them condemning Erdogan when he used the attacker's video in his campaigns in Turkey? What stopped them from denouncing them? It's the same thing, it's trade, you know? Um, and that can, cannot be, uh, you know, we gotta be moral leaders here. We're in, we're in the South Pacific, New Zealand specifically, I'm, I'm a New Zealand resident, so I can, I can speak as a New Zealander and say that New Zealand's always held a moral high ground in terms of international politics, being our non-nuclear policy, uh, the way that we treat people, be it the way that we accept people into the country, the way that we, you know, deal with the balance of indigenous rights and how we, how we uh, represent ourselves with our indigenous past. New Zealand's a unique, unique place like that. Helen Clark's government shaped New Zealand in a beautiful way, you know, throughout the years. And 
you know, for us not to recognize the genocide after US Congress had, we can't even blame being a US ally or geopolitics or, you know, that kind of stuff having to do with Turkey. It's, it's a shame, you know, it's something that needs to be done immediately. Same with Australia, obviously. Um, and, you know, when you don't punish an instigator of violence, let alone a genocide, they can, they can in the future run free and do things that they're doing as Turkey's Erdogan is doing now. Very well said. And on that note, uh, we are running on the Armenian National Committee of Australia page a first responders uh, invitation, uh, because obviously um, we do require a lot of these media reports, a lot of um, uh, members of parliament that we've approached, for example, for comment, uh, have already come out. And we do appreciate all of those people, Tim Wilson, Trent Zimmerman, Joel Fitzgibbon, uh, you know, Christina Keneally uh, and a lot of others, Jason Felinski, and also at state level and, and local government level, we're trying to put all of that out there, but we have approached a lot more. So if you want to know who we're waiting on responses from, join that first responders. Uh, uh, Sarin will put the link on our Facebook page a little bit later on and uh, and you guys can, uh, can click that form and, and join it. And you know, we will, uh, if you are from New Zealand, join it because then we'll give that database to, to Huri and, and, and Huri will definitely make sure that you are aware who we're waiting on responses from. The more legislators speak out about the, this issue, the genocide and issues like this, uh, the more difficult it's going to be for administrations uh, to hide behind uh, the bureaucracy, uh, which is very clearly influenced by Turkey uh, and influenced in this case by Azerbaijan. So follow everything that we're doing about the local stuff. Uh, internationally said, just sort of uh, to, to wrap things up, um, one, of the, uh, one of the, I guess, uh, important uh, opportunities that you've got uh, speaking to this audience, you know, um, what would your message be uh, for everybody at home? Non-Armenians, Armenians alike, and also uh, uh, if you can, um, uh, save a few words for, you know, the soldiers, the families of soldiers, and, you know, even our government in Armenia, government in Artsakh, all the people that are actually, you know, the real heroes of this at the moment, the ones on the front line. We just did a um, face, Facebook page, uh, sorry, not a Facebook page. Uh, uh, we did a social media post with System of a Down today that went pretty wide that we're also sending to press. And, you know, the, one of the things we wrote in it is, system of a down has always been interested in justice because of the Armenian genocide, because that taught us that there are so many truths out there in the world that are being denied for geopolitical capital or ec economic purposes. Um, this is the time when, you know, we put all of that aside and that, that we actually stand together around the world for justice. This is a time where everyone's busy with COVID, uh, dealing with their own difficult circumstances, elections in the US, elections in New Zealand, and, and many different you know, fires in California. There's so much havoc going on in the world, 2020 shit, as we all know. And it's just gotten worse. You know, it's just, it's, and, and, but, but we can't allow the distraction of COVID elections or other things to allow Azerbaijan and Turkey to kill innocent civilians, to kill uh, young 19-year-old soldiers that are just trying to defend their country, defend their borders, and you know, and and the families and the community that's got to deal with it for the next 30, 40 years of rebuilding and 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 dealing with this. It is, you know, it's we we cannot allow this to continue as an international community. Um, you know, it. I don't know what else to say. I'm 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 blown away. And I'll go back to my first statement I made when we started this Zoom conference. I'm blown away by the fact that the grandkids of genocide perpetrators are shooting missiles at the grandkids of genocide victims. I'm blown away that the world hasn't fucking seen that. And we understand your anger. Um, and we feel the same anger. We are genocide, we're uh, you know, grandchildren of genocide survivors. So this affects us and uh, to see our young men and women fighting on the front line is devastating. I think what we should also point out very clearly here is that there is strategic acts on civilian lives in Armenia and Arsakh. Armenia is not doing that back. Our position is 
a defense position. We have the right to protect our land, but our people, most of all. And it's that that's really affecting the international Armenian community, as well as other humanitarians who are fighting for this cause. Um, right. It's important that we note that civilian lives are being lost. A girl as little as nine years old has been killed. And that's something that if you're not angry now, you definitely should be after hearing that, for sure. Um, from from uh, our office, from our organization, uh, we pledge to do what we can to support those that are the real heroes, the guys on the ground. And as much as, uh, you know, it upsets us, it angers us that they're on the front line, I think they're, you know, living their best days, you know, defending your home, defending the home uh, that so many have fought and died for over the years uh, is a source of pride. And those guys should feel that pride when they're over there. We know they do. They're doing a tremendous job. Our hearts, souls, blood, sweat, tears are with them. Uh, and even at this distance, uh, we're all going to do everything that we can in our power. And we thank Serge uh, for doing everything. That I thank you. Power. I thank you for doing everything that you guys do. Yeah. Serge, thank you for using your platform uh, to spread awareness and share this information. Uh, if you would like to know anything else, the viewers who are watching, please feel free to visit and please we encourage you to feel um, comfortable visiting all the outlet media outlets that we are publicizing, including our Facebook pages, um, ANC, AU and ANC and Z will be spreading um, the message there as well. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Serge.